Hey, what's up guys? Good morning. Welcome back to a new video. Today, we have big goals, big plans. September 25th, guys. You know what tomorrow is? It is opening day of Utah's general season muzzle loader deer hunt. And guess who has a tag? My little brother Walker, one of my favorite people to hunt with. We have done zero scouting. We failed to put out our, our stealth cams in this unit. So I'm going up this morning and we're probably going up tonight and we're gonna go scout for bucks and uh, have a good time. That's what me and my brother do every time. So off to the mountain I go. Oh my freaking gosh, this freaking show it to you. into this spot and uh, it's always fun to come see what's what's going on pretty dark coming up but there's definitely some deer trails fresh track so there's gotta be something living in here the only problem is I forgot my binoculars <laughs> so I'm gonna have to just scan with my eyes and use the spotting scope I got the vortex razor with me let's get to it also brought my new puffy coat a little windy up here. Thing's still brand new. I'll put that on, get my scope out, and hopefully show you guys some deer. Man! Tip of the day, don't forget your binoculars because it's been just difficult to use the scope to try to glass deer, you know, so fairly close. It's been tough. I hadn't seen a deer all morning, so I was like, I need to go on the ridge. I just walked up. Sure enough, spooked. Six deer, three bucks. I got some phone scope video of the one. He's a four by three. It's not a real big buck, but he's got a really cool double throat patch. The two bucks I never did film, they bounced over the ridge real quick. They were a little bigger than him. Gut instinct off just the quick flash of, and over the skyline I saw them. They weren't the buck I'm looking for. And uh, it's hard to say that I'm even looking for a buck. The buck that I want to hunt was in here last year. He was in here the year before. From what I know, he never got killed. So if that buck is still in here, we're definitely definitely going to want to hunt him. It's just that we didn't set cameras and we didn't come scout, so we don't know if he's here or not. And just so you know, we do have a phone scope discount code. It's the hush code, phonescope.com. You guys know all the links and uh, all the discounts we have for you guys are in the description box below. Guys, happy September 25th. Let me just give you a little idea of what it looks like after you get home from Montana, you run to California to meet your wife, and then you try to prepare for your next adventure. I'm sure a lot of you can relate. You get home from hunting, you're just so tired that you literally don't do anything. You maybe leave the truck full, everything's dirty, and then this happens. Complete and utter yard sale. Yeah. So what we're dealing with here. A couple updates. If you've been following along in the videos, you've noticed a couple things. You've noticed we are not wearing the Horn Hunter packs this year. We're actually switching it up and trying some different stuff. A couple things to talk about. This is the XO pack, so 3,500. And it was my first time really putting it through the test in Montana. And I gotta tell you, so far I am impressed. It's very comfortable. I liked the system of a couple things that I'll show you. So it's just a roll top. It's really easy to get in and out of. And then there is a liner here that is also a dry bag. This liner just clips in and pulls right out. So if you watch any of the Montana videos, there's a couple of times we ditched camp and then hiked the elk that we had killed back down to the trailhead. We're able to just leave all of our camp stuff right into here in this dry bag. So the way it worked is everything went into the major compartment just jammed in there so think sleeping bag sleeping pad any extra clothes your food stove isobutane fuel all main compartment on this pack they have these side pockets 
What goes in here, tent, floor, rain fly, poles, usually like a rain jacket, whatever your morning layer is. Sometimes it was a puffy. Those just slam in there. What we'd run in here, it's easy to access without having to get in your bag. It's expandable. Is our water filtration system. So this is just the Sawyer filter. And then what you would see, if you watch the hunting videos, is the quick disconnect. So that just pops off right there. And then the uh, filter for the dirty water can pop right into that. I love this system. You can do two things. You can grab a bunch of dirty water and then immediately filter it into your bag while it's completely full. You don't have to go digging around in the inside to try to find the actual bladder, which can be a real hassle when your pack is loaded. And then the other cool thing is if you were in a hurry or maybe you're on a bowl, or you're trying to get somewhere before dark, you can fill up the two extra dirty bags, put the caps on them, throw them in the top of your pack, and then you could filter later. In theory, I have a three liter in my pack platypus and then two two liters. So that's quite a bit of water that we could carry if we needed to. I really like that system. Again, first time using it, 100% stole it from Born and Raised. Cody and Trevor were very, very instrumental in showing us how to pa pack like efficiently. I have a tendency to bring a lot of stuff, usually always overpack. They help kind of pare that down. And there's a lot of guys that'll get really into counting ounces. I mean, cutting two toothbrush handles off, and really trying to minimize. I know Ryan Callahan for First Light is a very much a minimalist packer. Casey and I probably bring a little bit extra. Areas that I think I could have saved on, I think I brought some additional food I didn't really go through. So I'll probably pare down my food a little bit. But otherwise I felt really good about what I had from a sleeping bag, sleeping pack. I, I stayed warm. My tent was great. And my pack didn't weigh a ton, you know? Little amenities like this uh, Sea to Summit, blow up, pillow were great. Just trying to make the sleep a little bit more comfortable. I mean, overall, I felt really solid about it. And my review on the XO pack so far is a definite thumbs up. We're also messing around with the Stone Glacier Evo 3300. And then you add the lid, you get a little more cubic inches there. And I'm excited to kind of put that one through the test. Haven't packed out an animal yet with that pack, but I'm um, hoping to in the future and just kind of see how that one performs as well. And then, I don't know, maybe down the road, we'll try out a couple different packs. The Horn Hunter was a, a good pack for the price point, but it wouldn't have performed as adequately in my opinion on like a true backcountry, living out of your backpack type of hunt. It's not really meant to do that. And so the Exo pack, Stone Glacier packs are certainly a higher price point. But like a lot of things, you know, you end up kind of getting what you pay for. If you are not gonna be doing that style of hunting and it, you don't need like a true expedition type backpack, I guess, then a Horn Hunter is gonna be a great fit for you. Anyways, that's what we're kind of doing right now this year is exploring some different options and just seeing if we can settle on something that we really, really love and that fits like our style of hunting a little bit better. If you have any questions, feel free to let us know. We're gonna be super transparent tell you what we like what we don't like both companies both exo and stone glacier are run by really really great guys and they've got a incredible culture. They both make a rad product. A lot of it comes down to just personal preference and what do you like versus what someone else likes. What works for me doesn't necessarily work for Casey and Eric. And uh, that's again, why everybody has their own opinions on, on gear. I am uh, trying to get all this stuff picked up. Just got the truck unloaded, I'm trying to get reorganized. My truck stinks in the back. Like it got wet. I guess my dog doesn't care. <laughs> he does not care. But getting things organized, repacking, next big adventure for me, Wyoming, with Casey and his daughter, Adam Weatherby, his daughter, Ryan Callahan, gonna be a ton of fun. Uh, thanks for sticking with us. And again, we will see you tomorrow. Not a ton of room here. Welcome to the local range. Here with my dad. We're gonna sight Braley's gun in. Braley was supposed to come with us today, but she has cheerleading practice. So I'm gonna get it close, and then uh, I'm gonna come work with Braley the next three days. I'm gonna get it close for myself. It might be totally different for Braley. So I'm gonna get it close, and then bring her out tomorrow night and uh, see where it's shooting, and then work with her. I think our maximum range is gonna be about 250 to 300 yards with her. She's killed two animals before. Killed a bear at 110 yards, and a uh, white-tail deer at 225 last year. So. She's a pretty good shot. I've been pretty impressed over the last few years with her. But uh, we'll see how this uh, weather bee shoots. So I just bore sighted it basically by looking through the bore at the target at 50 yards. Then I adjusted the scope to be at the same place. So it'll be on the paper, but it'll need more fine adjustments. But good good way to start. Tech tip with Carl. So I sent it back to life. Part. But, we'll make the deal on these others. Oh, I, I thought them looked awful new. Yeah. 
Good deal. So my dad zeroed it just by looking through the bore of the barrel and lining it up. Uh, one shot at 50. I think we're good. Well, pack up and go home. <laughs> that was right. Crazy. That gun shoots well. <laughs> Weatherby Camilla, good gun. Let's put it out at 100 and shoot it. Yeah. Get close there. I swear I'm just just above that last one. Might be. I can't see it very well. Let me shoot a group. Let's go look at it. So at 50 was right on first shot. Second, two, second, second and third shot were about three inches left. Still height is perfect, and the group's not bad. So that was my second and my third shot. So I'm gonna move it to the right three inches and we'll shoot it again and see where we're at. See those holes? That's a bullseye, huh? So we're gonna move this thing. We're shooting left about three inches. We're gonna go right, which is counterclockwise. Uh, one click is a half MOA, so at 100 yards, it's a, a quarter, I should say. So 12, four we're times three is 12. All right. So I just went to Sportsman and picked up some rounds. I'm a big fan of Nosler Acubons, and uh, so Federal actually makes them for the 6 and tree more, but they're 140 grain Nosler Acubons. Um, I think What's they're that? only around 27. Yeah, deer, huh? No. Nice yeah, buck? muzzle's 27, yeah, 25 with these. One. So you could get a lot more speed if you would drop down to like 120 grain. But this gun was created not to be the fastest gun, but a very, very accurate gun. I'm just on the right side of the orange paper. Yeah, that's probably good enough until she shoots it. All right, so we got my daughter's gun. It's pretty much zeroed at 100. We're gonna try to figure out if we wanna be three inches high or if we just wanna be zeroed and then play the holdover game, but um, I'm gonna leave it there until she can come out and shoot it and make sure it's still zeroed, and then we'll make the decision to either go three inches high or just leave it there at zero. But now there I'm gonna go. shoot the uh, Weathery 257 that I'm gonna be using on the antelope hunt. My dad was kind enough to come and get it pretty darn close cool. to zero today. I'm gonna see if it's still zero for me, though. Jeez. Yeah, I'm just three inches high, a little left. A little better. I'll take that. I think later this week I'm gonna go shoot this thing out to 400 yards and we'll really be able to tell where it's hitting, but it's really close, right where I want it. That gun shoots nice. Yeah, it's not a bad Absolute recoil. Absolutely zero kick to it. Logan, guys, it's, it's time. Logan's gonna get into tactical mode right now. He's so excited. You ready, buddy, you ready? Okay, it's time. Shows how manly Logan's gun is that he shows up to the range with. And it looks like a jug of fluid of some kind. You know, you could unscrew this and just... <laughs> but, I don't know what it is. I'll hide a flask or what, Dad? I was going to say, who shows up to the gun range with a purse? A man purse. <laughs> that guy does. That's who. Logan's like, yeah, dude, I could just throw that in my backpack next time we're backpacking. I'm like, yeah, that'd be sweet. And he could, like kill like an angry herd of squirrels if we run into them. He's like, do you want to I'm explain like, your gun? No one knows anything this about is that. This the Kel-Tec Sub 2000, um, chambered in a Glock magazine. So the big benefit to this gun is it is a pistol cartridge. It's actually a carbine. But if you shoot a Glock in nine millimeter, the mags are transferable. So my next plan is to get a Glock nine millimeter. And basically what it does is you can have the same mags, same ammunition, swappable into your carbine, and it adds about 100, 120 yards of distance. So I don't know why these guys are making fun of me so much. Show, show us that bad boy in action. Sense. This is how it breaks down. There's a switch right here that goes onto the lip of the rail you that'll hold here? it closed. You just flip that switch. You. You're ready to rock. Not right now. This no. mag is... It's a Glock 33 round clip, so you're not limited. And your normal standard Glock 
You might recognize this guy right here. This is the PMAC 17 Glock 9. Uh, 1L by 50. It's a 17 round clip. This isn't your standard Glock handgun. It'll also go in, but I liked the Extendo version so I can shoot more. Something different about this gun is the receiver to act to to the action is right here. So you can lock it, mag's in it, it's ready to go, we're hot. Put on safety, and you're ready to put it, engage a shell, hit down. And this guy is actually cycling in between each shot. So it's best when shooting a Keltec not to do any silly business or have anything in this way because it'll get torn up. I didn't learn that at my experience, I learned that by just looking at it. Okay, step out there and show us what you got there, bud. Okay. Okay, hold on. So we're going to do work on these pigeonios. And then, so pretty, pretty impressive, sweet, I do say. And then, if things get really hairy, you hold it like this and you go just like that. And this is the Keltec sub 2000 collapsible you can keep it i keep mine in my jeep between my driver's seat and center console it just tucks away right there so it's super compact if you shoot a lot of glock 9 it's cheap ammunition and uh you can have more fun with it shoot farther distances did you just become a caltech sales rep in the making of this video put in my link hashtag logan ninja sub 2000 you can get yourself 0.5 percent off i'm back home now it's kind of midday i'm getting the muzzle loader out that walker's gonna hunt with Bergera Acura V2 50 cal muzzle loader, Vortex Diamondback rifle scope. So I've never killed anything with this. I've never hunted with it, but Walker's killed one deer and my dad has killed one elk with it. And the last time we hunted with it was on my dad's limited entry Utah elk tag. So I'm just gonna go through it real quick. Just double check all my inventory and clean it. We've got, uh, Plenty of bullets. Well, we'll see how many we shoot at practice. I'll probably need to go get some more of those. Just some purpose, all-purpose cleaner patches, just general use stuff. And uh, I use this right here to clean. And then also these help clean as well. They're already, they're pads that already have like cleaning solution and stuff in it. I don't know all the names of this stuff. I'm not much of a muzzleloader hunter, but I think it's fun. It's a great time of the year. And when my brother couldn't draw a tag, and there was some leftover muzzleloader tags, we picked this up. Here we go, guys. Welcome, Walker, to the video. General season hunt, baby. <laughs> Always one of my favorite hunts of the year. The good news is we we have a lot of history in this area, so it's not like we're going in blind. We kind of know what's up. There's this one particular buck that we hope survived the hunts and the winter last year, but we had a super easy winter, so I can't imagine that that would you know, he would win or kill. He is a super healthy, mature buck, so I don't see that being an issue. Like, I honestly feel like he's alive. It's just whether or not he's living back where he, he was, but I feel like he would be. It's, we've seen him two years in a row. I already showed you guys some pictures and some video, but if he's still there, I think we have a really good chance of finding him. Yeah. This is the hard part. When you shoot at a deer or an elk and you're trying to reload, you're just kind of scrambling, but this is all, all you do for this muzzle loader is pour the hunting grains down the barrel, Grab your bullet, stick them in. Yep, that little starter tool. Get it down there to start. All the way down, smooth as possible. <laughs> right through the other hole. <laughs> <laughs> same spot, huh? Yeah, they're, they're, you broke through the same hole. Oh yeah, we're on the money. All right, Walker's gonna shoot the third shot. Now, I typically clean it every two shots. We're doing this just for reference to see how it affects the third shot without cleaning it, just in case we're on the mountain and we have to do something like that. Well, you hit the red bullseye, so you're a little lower than that two group, but you're right in there. Red bullseye there. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Walker's stoked. It's a good grouping. I'd say this thing is on. 